The golden ratio is mentioned in Euclid's Elements in 300 BC. Then throughout history, different mathematicians have done work with the golden ratio. And in fact, here is one of the Islamic mathematicians working in Baghdad, Iraq in the year 1150, and he gives the golden ratio as square root 125 minus 5 divided by 15 minus square root 125. So here's our version of the simplified form of the golden ratio. And what we want to do is see if we can't take this and turn it into this to show that he was correct in his um, expression for the golden ratio. So we can use our properties of radicals. Let's take his expression right here. And the first thing we want to do is simplify square root 125. So I know that 125 is 25 times 5, so I'll take that 25, that's 25 out as square root 25, which is 5. Right, square root 125 in simplified form is 5 square root 5 minus 5 over 15 minus, again, 5 square root 5. So I'm just going to continue to simplify this expression until I get down to something that looks like this golden ratio, or be able to show that it's not the golden ratio. Well, let's see, I have a 5 common to the numerator and denominator, so let's take this over here. I'll factor out a 5 from the numerator. I get square root 5 minus 1. I'll factor out a 5 from the denominator, and I'll have 5 times 3 minus square root 5. Okay, so I can see that I can divide out those 5s right there, and now I have left square root 5 minus 1 over 3 minus square root 5. That's about as simple as this is going to get. When I look back to my expression for the golden ratio right here, I see I just have a rational number, just a, an integer in the denominator. So when I look at this, I say, well, let's see if I can do that same thing, get some integer down here by getting rid of the square root 5. I do that by rationalizing the denominator. So I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator of this by the conjugate of this denominator. So 3 plus square root 5. If I do that to the denominator, I'll do the same thing to the numerator. So I'm essentially multiplying this expression right here by the number 1, so I know I won't change its value. Now let's just go ahead and multiply. So I'm going to have square root 5 times 3, 3 square root 5. Square root 5 times square root 5, that'll be just 5. Minus 1 times 3, minus 3, minus 1 times square root 5, minus square root 5. And then in the denominator, you know, when you multiply conjugates, 3 minus square root 5 times 3 plus square root 5, I get the first term squared minus the second term squared. So I'm going to end up with 9 minus square root 5 squared, which is 5. Okay, so it looks like I'm getting there. Let's see, what do we have here? 3 square root 5 minus square root 5, that's going to be 2 square root 5. 5 subtract 3 is 2. And in the denominator here, 9 minus 5 is going to be 4. Okay, I see I have a 2 common to the numerator and a 2 common to the denominator. I'll factor that 2 out, and I end up with 2 times square root 5 plus 1, all divided by 2 times 2. I'll divide those 2, 2's out, and I'll change the order of the numerator just so it looks like my version of the golden ratio and end up with 1 plus square root 5 over 2. Okay, 1 plus square root 5 over 2, exactly the same thing. So he was right, this is an expression for the golden ratio, and I can show this by using my properties of radicals. Now, I like this, this problem in my classes because it really has everything I want my students to know about radicals, about, you know, uh, simplifying by um, factoring a common factor out of the numerator and denominator and reducing to lowest terms. Um, um, rationalizing the denominator here, multiplying binomial type expressions here with radicals, and then again simplifying by factoring the numerator and denominator and dividing out that common factor. The more of these kind of things we do in class, the better off my students are, and it will keep them from trying to divide out just little parts of this right here by doing it the correct way by factoring out the numerator and denominator, dividing out common factors. So it's no... Um, accident that this kind of mathematics is going on in Baghdad, Iraq in the year 1150. As a matter of fact, you can't tell the story of mathematics and algebra in particular without going through Baghdad, Iraq. Um, in fact, the first algebra book comes out of Baghdad about 200 years before this. So it's a very interesting story 
Uh, maybe in one of the later videos we'll tell that story. But in any case, good practice here with the properties of radicals and taking this expression and showing that it actually is the golden ratio.